The battle for the licenses begins. It's like the tournament part two, but this time, school versus school, which is kind of awesome. UA is immediately crushed. Not this year. I, like Aizawa, have faith. Does he just make this up as he goes along? <laughs> I don't really see a reason why I should have warned them. Damn right. Tell her, Aizawa. Tell her to get some better jokes while she's at it. Real heroes could turn this situation around. <laughs> this thing. <laughs> Hit him with your anal beads, Mineta. We look a little further ahead than other schools. Oh. Get out. Get out of here. Shiketsu high lurking. <laughs> It's amazing how competitive this got me. Why do I have school loyalty in this fictional universe? I don't know. All I know is that I want every other school to be crushed. <laughs> Annihilated. But if they're seduced by the urge to win and rush to get points, they'll end up exposing themselves. But I feel like this class knows better. They're battle-tested, battle-hardened. Shikui Makabe. Stiffening. Stiffening. He can make whatever he touches with his hands super hard. But I'll bet he can. doesn't work on living things. Oh, okay. All right. Just try not to be jealous when I end up finishing ahead of the rest of our class. But I'm sure you won't mind since I'll be reducing enemy numbers with this elegant attack. I feel like he and Ayama would get along really well. He can throw objects at any trajectory with stupidly precise aim, even underground. That's pretty cool. Where are they gonna pop out? Get back, I'll handle nice. this. Nice. Hell yeah. She's perfect for it. Sound amplification. Amplifier jack. This is the kind of teamwork I'm, I'm looking for. Recently, they've been giving us glimpses of what it's like when they work together as a team. And it's so awesome. It's so great. The potential feels limitless with them as a class. Show them, Kyoka. She's breaking the ground apart. That was way, way more impressive than I thought it would be. Protect this perv. Protect this perv. How <laughs> thick. That's such a great move. It's my defensive special that creates a melty wall. So they've been working on ultimate moves already. Yep. They had 10 days. And they're just battle ready already with these moves. Pretty amazing. Piercing Twilight Claws! <laughs> oh my god, he killed her. Okay. I'm surprised that doesn't actually happen. You know, you'd figure there'd be accidents now and then. People get just ripped in half like that. Body into itself like a turtle. It's actually pretty creepy when you see it in action. Yeah, it also doesn't seem really that useful. I mean, it makes it really good at ducking. It's obvious their training is making them better fighters. Uh. Not a single one's passed yet. Go to bed. And don't worry, students. I'll keep you updated with an announcement every time a few students move on to the next round. Please just leave. That's a pretty condescending thing to say, Eraser. Uh oh, was he underestimating them? Oh no. Oh no. Be heroes. A lot. Of well Everyone, is far basically. More important than going to a famous school or having renown. When you think you're yeah. the stars and look down on others, you reveal your weaknesses. That's how you. Ooh, feel. I I like this out of her a lot better. There's definitely something to that. Like one advantage, if any, that people who don't go to UA have is they're looking up at UA and they have a chip on their shoulder. And there is a kind of arrogance that could come with attachment to a title or to the esteem of an institution or something like that. You know, that really is not where it's at skill-wise. Personally, I think that anybody can make any school work or any level of a thing work depending on the work that each person puts in. For the most part, whatever they attend is going to have the same basic infrastructure. And then it's a matter of like putting in the maximum amount of work, the maximum amount of focus into it, asking the right questions, finding the things they need to help them grow, which is never something school can really do for you you know there's always sort of a give and take that's the mistake i see a lot of students make is thinking that by showing up they're getting what they need but actually it has to be a more active process and also i think this probably mirrors something i've noticed in real life about really esteemed universities let's say like for example i have a friend who went to harvard law and so i've met a lot of his harvard law friends and it's been really interesting to interact with them because mm -hmm. my take on it is that while they're very intelligent it's not that they're at this like superhuman level of intelligence it's more like they just really knew what they wanted and were very very good about understanding how to get there and focusing on that and being very ambitious which you might argue suggests some kind of higher aptitude, which is probably true to some extent. They're just normal people with like, you know, sufficient intelligence that were really, really dedicated and hardworking towards that goal. And if the goal is knowledge and skills and ability, who's to say that you can't get that wherever you are? You know, who's to say you can't get that on your own? Where she's wrong though, or where this doesn't really mirror life is that through circumstance, the OA students happen to be extremely, extremely experienced in actual battle, which is way beyond the scope of school. So that really is where their edge comes from. It's not the UA letters, not the UA logo or whatever. So some of these kids are probably really amazing. You know, they're probably really powerful and really determined. What is he doing? He's got Earthquake. Yeah, watch out rock and steel types. He just wiped them out with an Earthquake attack. I wonder if they're gonna like loop back around and Todoroki and Bakugo are gonna like come to the rescue or something like that. There are enemies everywhere. <sighs> I just heard machine gun fire, so <laughs> someone's gonna die. I know he's gonna win. 
Stop biding your time and get this over with. Get out. Leave. Go to bed. Is this a uh, forehead bleeder? I believe it's very important for heroes to wow. have passion. And all of you are fighting with it. Thank you. That's one of my favorite looks things like on Bison. What's he gonna do now that he's got our balls? Where's Chicken Man? <laughs> he's got your balls in, in a literal and figurative sense, it seems. Wow. Pretty amazing. That's the stuff How do you beat this I guy? Won. If you're the class of UA. What a quirk. Yeah, yeah. Although it seems like it would be hard to use in the city. I also underestimated these other students. The other schools have had so much more time to work together and learn to make decisions in battle. They have? By a whole year's worth of training. Oh right, they're they're just older. Of course. But there's no substitute for actual real world experience. These are strong students from all over the country. I don't know why. Uh, he's smiling. He loves it. Yeah, it's this. pretty awesome. It's great. Oh? What? Oh. This girl came out of nowhere. What's really weird is that you're in trouble and still smiling. Flirting with girls with a smile on my face. What was that sound effect? <laughs> See, I didn't want to miss the chance to interact with such a prestigious school, and I'm taking quite an interest in you. I can see that. You sure like to talk. Morocco has got a lot of competition. Does she have teammates coming to help her? Or is she just that overconfident? Doesn't matter. I've got to make sure I don't get taken out. What kind of game is she playing? Where'd she go? Huh? She's gone. What did she do? Did she teleport? You think my quirk lets me disappear? I, I did, actually, yeah. <laughs> what is it? I make my opponent's eyes and ears blind and deaf to my presence. Oh, that's that, pretty amazing. I my breath, clear my mind, and disappear. It's simple. And she doesn't even have to be useless like Invisible Girl. Invisible Girl takes another blow. I'm starting to feel kind of bad for her. The trick is to not view your training as some kind of chore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You gotta be connected to it. About each other. Now my question. Why exactly do you want to become a hero? I want to know your deepest desires and what scares you. Well, I feel like we do know Deku's motivation. But I am curious to know what he's afraid of. I feel like one of his big fears is probably letting people down. Letting All Might down, not being able to live up to his own ideals, which is sort of a painful thing. In fact, not too long ago, I was thinking about how I think a lot of our well-being comes not from achieving a certain quantitative benchmark in any aspect of our lives, but more on the question of like, do we meet our own expectations, which sometimes can be really high or sometimes can be really low and it sort of doesn't matter. Like there are things we can be terrible at and that's fine because we don't really have a priority on those things. We don't really care about those things. And there are things we can be great at that can still cause us some kind of mental pain because we're not meeting a super high standard we've set for ourselves. And that might seem basic, but that's been a help thought for me because it sort of makes goals and desires a little bit more tangible. It's like, well, what would be the minimum level I would need to reach to be satisfied with my own performance in these things? And it's just a thought that feels good to me because it's more personalized. It's less about meeting some arbitrary benchmark or benchmark set by others and more just asking myself, am I satisfied with my own level and what can I do to improve it if not? But it's dangerous for people like Deku because literally he's aiming to be the absolute perfect best hero ever like All Might. And so there's a lot of space in that to fail, which has got to be a tremendous amount of pressure that only people like Deku and All Might can live up to. Man, Chiketsu's trying to take him down too? Yeah, that's maybe one strategy they can use is getting the other schools to fight each other. The worst case scenario These are some interesting looking students. Reality. This little boy just got lost in this battlefield. But where is Chicken Man? <laughs> I'll take her down fast! It's Alakazam! Speaking of Pokemon. I chose to fight and save someone, which destroyed my arms. Yep. If I could have used them, then I might have been able to save Kachan. It all worked out and though. If Kachan was never taken, then All Might would never. Oh have yeah, to that. There's that too. <laughs> Whoops. If I had only been faster. Wow, he really took responsibility for that whole thing. That's why I have to train my legs now, so that I never fail to save anyone ever again. Well, I'll give it to him. At least he's taken that that thought and turning it into something positive. Even if he is like taking too much responsibility for that. Because to help others, you have to be able to take care. That's damn true. Great insight, Deku. And let's put it in perspective. This is not life or death, right? This is a license in your first year. You have another chance at it. I'll make myself stronger. Yeah. I'll keep fighting. But like, use it. Become the ideal hero I want to be. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever keeps you going. Whatever keeps you getting better. Can't you kids speed this along for me? Can't you leave, <laughs> please? We're just hiding. I still hear machine gun Close. fire. A lot of people are dying in this this event. <laughs> She's just so far gone. She's, just, she's in too deep. But last time she said she had a realization. She said that, that wasn't... What are, you, what are you doing? Stop. What are you doing? Why? What is this? It's a trick. 
It's not really her? Nah, it's not, it can't be her. She wouldn't do that. Falling from that height, you definitely would have injured yourself. Some good perspective, oh, at least. I see now. So you're just that good of a guy, huh? He is. Please tell me more about yourself. Everything. <laughs> Everyone's so interested in learning about Deku's innermost fears and desires. What? Someone else has... Tape? Oh, it's, uh, yeah, it's... Sarah. situation you're in? Sarah or Araka? There's the real Araka. I really, really wanted to talk to you some more. She reminds me of, uh, what's her name? Tabi? Dabby? Gabby? Ochako Uraraka. She's interesting. The copycat thing is cool, but she also seems like very intuitive psychologically. I'm, I'm wondering where that's going. Come back, naked girl! Don't <laughs> <laughs> Come back, naked girl. It might have just been her quirk, but it looked like she wasn't. But, I mean, the psychology, psychological targets. thing, that is a real skill as well. Not all quirks are quirks, you know what I mean? Who's he gonna be matched up against, I wonder? That was pretty good. Just what I'd expect. Oh, a lot of people. A runner-up of the UA Sports Festival. A ten-on-one fight? He doesn't stand a chance. These, just, these guys just strike me as NPCs. He can just freeze them all, right? And then... You know, slowly insert the balls into their targets. Damn it. Yeah, yeah. I thought you said you watched the sports festival. <laughs> oh damn! It's got you, got you there. You got a point. That's pretty cool. Size increases. Bold choice using fire there. Tungsten has a super high melting point. All right, so these NPCs are more prepared than I thought. They were right. Your pride will be your downfall. That's what uh, Joke was saying. So from this episode, I'm wondering how much of this is playing into setup. I mean, the rival schools thing is a great element and is a really good way to get us to root for Class 1A, but this is My Hero Academia, so I feel like there's probably something more to it. Would they introduce characters just for one arc? It's possible, but it's also possible that there's more to it than that, that actually they'll, they'll, they'll play a role in the remainder of Season 3 at least, because I don't think this is how it'll end. I think there's probably going to be some villain activity, although there's been a lot this season already, or something else beyond this license thing. This is not really a show with random events. Everything builds on itself. And connected to that, and this might be reading way too much into it, I'm wondering what, what the purpose of the girl was asking Deku all these, you know, deep questions about his motivations and his desires and his fears. What are we about to uncover with Deku? I also love that Deku, in classic Deku fashion, managed to take this, you know, in some ways low stakes event and turn it into a way to motivate himself and to reflect on his failings or you know, self-perceived failings in the incident with Muscle Man to act faster. I can't help but wonder if in some sense it's intentional that that led to a potential mistake. Like, he jumped in to save who he thought was Uraraka, but it wasn't Uraraka. Although, it's not a mistake because he, he saved them either way, right? So yeah, the unofficial school tournament continues next episode where Chicken Man finally makes his debut and proves that he's the most powerful of all.